Hi everyone, this is Mr. Neil Wright here, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. This is of a patient who attended with a condition called medial canal fibrosis, uh, which gives the appearance of a false fundus. And I'll come on to that in a moment. Um, now, we're just commencing with this there right here, and the medial canal fibrosis is actually present in their left ear. So, uh, once I've removed this blockage from the right ear, we'll focus on what uh, medial canal fibrosis is and why it gives a false appearance of a false fundus and what a false fundus, what, what the definition is. So this is their right ear. They've got a quite a narrow ear canal and they've got this buildup of sticky dead skin and wax. Uh, you can see it's got a kind of a caramel consistency and I'm just using microsuction to um, vacuum this uh, occlusion out of the ear. Because of the sticky nature and consistency of the wax and dead skin, I've just instilled some medical grade olive oil spray. Uh, the particular brand that I use, it's called Clear. And we also sell this on our website, both to members of the public, if you want to use some olive oil uh, earwax drops on a regular basis or prior to having your earwax removed. If you just visit our website, the URL's bottom right, it's www.clearwax.co.uk. The link is also available in the description and you can visit our online public shop and make uh, you can uh, purchase both um, the clear olive oil spray. We've also got a drops format as well alongside other products that may interest you. And if you're a specialist, you can again visit our website, select sign in. And if you register as a professional, you'll then get access to our trade shop where you can purchase the clear olive oil. Um, spray again alongside other um, earwax removal consumables at trade prices and what the oil has done in this case it's helped to bind the sticky soft wax together to form a plug and it just makes the removal of the plug far easier so you can see it came out on a big mass there so uh, if you've been watching my channel and my videos for a while you know I like to make food analogies and I always compare the olive oil to an egg in a potato cake or fish cake recipe, for example. It just helps to bind all the ingredients in. That's the patient's eardrum, uh, nice and healthy. So this is the ear where this patient has got a, a condition called medial canal fibrosis, giving the appearance of a false fundus. So what is a medial canal fibrosis? Now, in patients who suffer from chronic um, outer ear infections or who've had previous surgery to the eardrum, so a tympanoplasty, for example, where ear, uh, they've had a perforated eardrum and it's been patched up. Uh, there's always the a sort of risk, and it is a slim risk, of um, the patient developing a buildup of fibrous tissue um, very deep in the ear, uh, extending from the eardrum. And this fibrous tissue can uh, get thicker and thicker um, closing up the, in essence, the, the, the bony part of the ear canal, so the, the part of the ear canal closest to the eardrum. And that gives the, uh, the, the rise and appearance of a false fundus. So a false fundus is um, a false appearance of an eardrum, basically. And you can see it here now. Uh, I've got that, again, I put some drops in there just to bind all this sticky wax uh, and skin together. Now, you can't actually see this patient's true eardrum because their true eardrum has been replaced by um, all this fibrous tissue. And what you're seeing there is actually a fake eardrum, hence the term a false fundus. So fundus is a, a medical um, term given to, or to describe the top region of a hollow uh, cavity or organ in the body um, so in the case of the ear, because it's a hollow cavity, uh, the furthest point away from the entrance, um, we call that the fundus. And that's normally where the eardrum should be. So the eardrum should be the fundus region of the ear canal. Um, but because the eardrum has got this thick layer of fibrous tissue that has um, uh, formed and uh, enlarged itself, uh, extending from the eardrum towards the ear canal entrance, it gives the false appearance of an eardrum, hence the term false fundus. So I uh, hope that explanation, if you've been watching uh, other videos where the term false fundus is used and you weren't, or you've been, you've been diagnosed with it and you're not quite sure what it is, hopefully that helps to explain it a bit better. Um, 
So why does medial canal fibrosis form? Um, it's just more often than not down to the individual patient's healing process. So if they've undergone chronic ear infections and the ear's healing or post-surgery, um, for some patients, the healing process is just slightly abnormal and they get a buildup of fibrous tissue. So the, our eardrum uh, consists of three membranes. Um, the outermost membrane, which is facing towards us, that's a very thin layer of skin. And it's the same skin that lines the inner two thirds of the ear canal. It's a very, very thin sheet of skin, less than 0.1 millimeters in thickness. The innermost membrane, so the membrane facing towards the middle ear, which is the cavity behind the eardrum, that's a mucosa layer. So that, that's, those skin cells are specialised to secrete fluid. Um, it's similar to uh, the, the lining inside of our nose. That's also called the mucosa. And then the eardrum has got this middle membrane, and that's made up of fibrous and connective tissue. And it's that, um, that fibrous tissue that then, during the healing process, for whatever reason, it just forms and it, more than it should do and it sits on top of the eardrum and uh, it just gets thicker and thicker. Uh, I've got a client at the moment where you can actually see uh, uh, once we remove the earwax, they haven't got a, tr a complete false fundus but you can see it's developing and they also had a canal cleshiotoma. I'm pretty sure I've uploaded this video. Uh, if I can find it, I shall put the video number into the description box and so we uh, refer to ENT because they've got a canal cleshiotoma, of course, and when they arrive, um, the ENT surgeon, using some local anaesthetic, managed to stop the formation of the false fundus. So before it completely sealed the ear canal, they were able to remove it. And, but unfortunately, it keeps coming back. So um, now there is surgery that can be done to remove this fibrous tissue. Uh, it's called a, a canaloplasty, where the surgeon can make an incision to the ear canal and remove all this fibrous tissue and also widen the ear canal because one of the other presentations of a, a medial canal fibrosis is a narrowing of the ear canal so they can widen it in the hope that when the ear then reheals itself, it doesn't form this fibrous tissue once more. So the false fundus, you can see it there in the distance, that very pinky layer of skin you can see you can't see any of the eardrum because it's the eardrum is it's concealed behind this uh, formation of um, fibrous tissue. So what I'm doing now, the patient can hear significant, and it, this can cause a hearing loss. The patient does wear hearing aids, so um, the development of this false fundus has caused a hearing loss. Now, because of the strange anatomy of the ear canal, they do just get this buildup of dead skin, and the skin, you can see, I'm just trying to peel it away, it lines the ear canal and it lines the surface of this fold. And so we're just trying to remove as much as possible. Now, I've got to be careful that uh, I don't make too much contact with this false fundus. Um, I've seen it in the past where you can actually make an incision into that and it can bleed really, really badly. And so we don't want to be doing that. And I'm just trying to remove as much dead skin off its surface as possible. Um, we have to accept that no matter how much you clean this ear, it, this condition is chronic unless they have um, revision surgery to try and remove this fibrous tissue. So we've got to be sensible. We don't want to overdo it where we're going to cause trauma to this because by causing trauma to the false fundus, we may encourage more growth of this fibrous tissue and make their false fundus even worse, which is the last thing we want to do. So I'm just hovering around the edge. So it's just a bit of dead skin superiorly here. So if this patient were to have a CT scan and comparing the length of this ear canal to their opposite ear canal, this the length of this ear canal will be significantly shorter because the the medial part of the ear canal towards the eardrum has been filled in by all this fibrous tissue, reducing the length of the ear canal. So they have a shorter ear canal length for that reason. So more at the entrance here, you can see there's some dead sticky skin. I'm just going to try and peel that away. It's not something we see regularly in clinic, false fundus. Um, possibly one every month. Uh, so probably one in... 150 cases possibly that I see. Um, 
I have got some clients where the false fundus is far more towards the entrance, so the layer of fibrous tissue is a lot thicker. You can also get some clients who develop this false fundus where it's just a thin sheet of fibrous tissue, and if, if a surgeon were to dissect through that, uh, it then reveals it. Behind that fibrous tissue, there's no real buildup of um, fibrous tissue, so it's like a sheet, a disc, a thin, a thin film of fibrous tissue, and if you tear through that, then it reveals a remaining part of the ear. Um, ear canal, so it does come in various presentations and forms. So again, I'm just mopping up near the entrance, and otherwise I'm really happy with this case. The patient was able to hear significantly better with the hearing aid that they have. They don't want to have any further surgery because they're just worried about uh, the healing process, but again, not going well, and this fibrous tissue getting getting worse. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. I hope you've all had a Merry Christmas. Do take care of yourself. Stay tuned. I've got loads more videos to upload in due course. Thank you. Bye.